Hello, this is the um, second part of uh, chapter four, where we're going to be talking about the effects of pregnancy on the reproductive system. The uterus becomes a temporary abdominal organ during pregnancy. Um, the capacity of the uterus um, ultimately is uh, 500, or excuse me, 5,000 mLs, and that typically consists of the fetus, the placenta, and the um, amniotic fluid. Um, the um, cervix changes in color, and we talked about that um, in the previous presentation, um, due to the um, uh, increased uh, blood flow. Um, the consistency also changed, um, and um, one of the key uh, changes in the cervix is that a mucus plug is formed to prevent the ascent of organisms um, into the uterus, uterus during pregnancy. Um, as um, pregnancy reaches its um, its endpoint, um, the cervix will um, thin, which is the, called the effacement, and um, it will um, open, which is the dilation. Um, at this point, um, the mucus plug will um, be loosened and expelled. Um, the ovaries, um, remember that the corpus luteum um, is um, a... Um, uh, producer of um, hormones during uh, particularly the first part of the pregnancy and it is uh, crucial to maintaining the pregnancy. Um, progesterone is uh, one of the key hormones that is produced and it helps to maintain the pregnancy particularly in the first six or seven weeks of the gestation until the placenta takes over um, that task. Um, the um, uh, blood supply to the vagina increases and um, that um, causes it to have uh, more of a bluish color. Vaginal secretions increase and the pH becomes more acidic. Higher glycogen level can promote um, candida albicans growth um, and that therefore will put uh, women at risk uh, for yeast infections. We also talked about earlier the um, increased ris risk of uh, bacterial vaginosis during pregnancy. Um, changes in the breast tissue include um, high levels of estrogen and progesterone which help to prepare the breast for lactation. Um, the tubercles of Montgomery secrete substance to lubricate the nipples. Um, Pre-milk is expressed and is high in protein and fat soluble vitamins and minerals. Remember too that um, as pregnancy reaches its end, um, the um, women, excuse me, the woman um, uh, will begin to produce this pre-milk, which is also called colostrum. The colostrum is um, incredibly important um, as it uh, transfers um, important um, antibodies to the newborn. Usually the uh, colostrum is um, present in the first two to three days um, uh, after birth. The um, fundal height is um, important to um, uh, consider during the course of pregnancy. There are um, expected um, uh, heights that the fundus should reach during certain points of the pregnancy. Um, this picture uh, shows a, a nice representation of that. Um, at 20 weeks, you would expect the fundus to be at the um, level of the umbilicus, and um, as uh, pregnancy reaches its end point uh, between 38 and 40 weeks, um, you would expect it to be at the level of the ribs. The, remember that the uterus is um, a muscular organ and it is um, uh, quite easy to assess the height of the fundus um, during the course of pregnancy. And you can see in this picture um, the provider is measuring the height of the um, fundus as this is important marker um, uh, uh, for the growth of um, the fetus. Um, effects of pregnancy on the respiratory system, oxygen consumption increases by 15%, the diaphragm rises, which hopefully makes some sense because um, the abdominal contents are um, increasing in size. Um, dyspnea may occur until the fetus descends um, into the pelvis, uh, uh, pre preparing for delivery. Um, estrogen can cause edema um, or swelling of mucous membranes of the nose, pharynx, mouth, and trachea. Um, and the woman might therefore complain of nasal stuffy stuffiness, epistaxis, and uh, voice changes. Um, cardiovascular effects of pregnancy, the blood volume increases about 45% compared to the pre-pregnant state. 
um, the uh, importance of this increase is, one, to exchange nutrients, oxygen, and waste products within the placenta, um, and also um, the uh, maternal um, tissue needs are greater during this time. And um, a third reason for the increase in blood volume is um, to serve as a possible res uh, excuse me, reserve for um, blood loss that um, occurs at birth. The pulse rate will also increase 10 to 15 beats per minute. Um, there's a condition called supine hypotension syndrome, uh, which is an important condition to be aware of. If a pregnant woman lies flat on her back, um, the um, weight of the uterus can compress the inferior vena cava, which therefore is going to reduce um, blood flow to the heart and can lead to fetal hypoxia. Symptoms can include faintness, lightheadedness, dizziness, and agitation. Um, a way to alleviate this is to um, have the woman turn on um, one side, which will alleviate the pressure on the inferior vena a cava. The preferred side um, is the left side. Here's a picture um, depicting the pressure exerted on the uh, inferior vena cava um, if the woman is lying supine. Um, therefore, um, considering having her lie on the side can relieve, can relieve that pressure. Um, also, women can be at risk for orthostatic hypotension. And remember, orthostatic hypotension is um, a drop in blood pressure when she changes position, particularly from lying to sitting or sitting to standing. She may also um, feel palpitations. Dilutional anemia is um, a possibility. And um, clotting factors increase in the second and third trimester, which can put the um, pregnant woman at risk for uh, blood clots. Um, effects on the GI system. Um, the growing uterus is going to displace stomach contacts and contents and the intestines. Um, it, there's an increase in salivary secretions. Um, appetite and thirst may increase. Gastric acid secretions decrease, which delays gastric emptying and intestinal movement. Um, therefore, the woman is at risk for constipation. Um, she's also at risk for constipation because of the iron in the prenatal vitamins. Here's a depiction um, of um, uh, the uh, displacement of the abdominal contents. Effects on the urinary system. Um, the urinary system excretes the waste products not only of the woman but of the fetus. Glomerular filtration rate increases. Um, glycosuria, glucose in the urine, or proteinuria can be common, and those um, would be monitored at prenatal visits. Um, the woman typically will give a urine sample, and uh, the sample will be dipped for glucose and protein. Um, water retention um, occurs, which um, can uh, lead to um, uh, edema, per particularly in the um, extremities. Um, this edema is also due to the fact that sodium is reabsorbed. Um, effects of pregnancy on the integumentary system and the skeletal system. Um, one, the woman develops um, striae, which are stretch marks, as the abdominal contents um, uh, grow uh, with the growth of the fetus. Um, the skin is stretched, um, therefore um, uh, sometimes causing uh, stretch marks. Postural changes um, also can occur. Um, the woman may complain of low back aches, um, a relaxation of the pelvic joints, a waddling gait, and a center, or excuse me, a change in the center of gravity. Um, therefore, you can um, surmise that balance can become an issue and the woman can be at a fall risk. So once again, thinking about safety, a change in the center of gravity and the joint instability because of the softening of the ligaments. And remember, um, on Thursday, we talked about um, the variety of ligaments that um, hold the uterus in place um, that can um, pr predispose the woman uh, to balance problems. So consider this when you're thinking about your prenatal education. Um, nutrition for pregnancy and lactation. Um, many times um, women are um, taught to eat for two while they're pregnant, but that's really not the case. The woman doesn't need to double her um, caloric intake. Um, the intake um, needs to be um, uh, evaluated based on the uh, woman's pre-pregnancy weight um, and um, the um, quality of the nutrients that she's going to intake both for herself and for the fetus. 
In terms of education, um, it's important to talk to the woman about reading food labels and um, looking to choose um, foods that are nutrient dense rather than empty calories. Um, examples of empty calories would be high sugar foods, um, sodas. Um, you really want to get her to focus on protein sources and complex carbohydrates as opposed to the simple um, carbohydrates. Um, the food pyramid can serve as a guide. Um, and um, it's also important to think about cultural differences in terms of diet. Um, the Latin American um, uh, diet can be quite different than um, our traditional American diet, so it's important to think about what sort of barriers or um, issues could arise um, based on the uh, woman's traditional diet. Maternal diet and fetal health. Um, there's a high correlation between mater maternal diet and fetal health. Um, so it is crucial, particularly in the first week of, um, or excuse me, first weeks of pregnancy, to ensure that deficiencies do not occur. Um, therefore, the nurse should focus on um, the importance of eating well-balanced meals and um, also taking um, supplements if there is um, nutritional deficiencies. Um, so let's look at weight gain. Um, there are parameters for um, uh, weight gain during pregnancy, and it is typically um, based on the woman's pre-pregnancy weight. So for example, a woman with a um, normal BMI um, would be encouraged to gain between 25 and 35 pounds. Um, Obese women um, would be encouraged to um, gain uh, less weight, typically between 11 and 20 pounds. Um, there's a typo here. Um, overweight women should not be encouraged to gain 31 to 50 pounds. Um, rather, um, uh, overweight women should be um, encouraged to gain between 11 and 25 pounds. Um, underweight women should be encouraged to gain between 28 and 40 pounds. Um, now, if there is a multifetal pregnancy, if there are twins, the woman should gain four to six pounds in the first trimester and one and a half pounds per week in the second and third trimesters for a total of 37 to 54 pounds. The um, breakdown of the um, weight um, gain recommendations is on page 59 in your book. Um, nutritional requirements. Remember I mentioned that um, women um, shouldn't uh, be doubling their total caloric intake when thinking about um, diet during pregnancy. Um, really an increase in 300 calories to, um, per day is sufficient for the growing fetus. And um, the focus should be on the quality of the nutrients that the woman is um, taking in. So protein should be an emphasis, making sure that she's getting 60 grams per day. Calcium as well should be a um, focal point, iron um, and folic acid, which are often um, um, obtained in um, supplement, but are also present in a variety of foods. It's important um, to um, not exceed um, the um, upper limits of the recommended dietary allowance um, and um, this um, should be a, a focus of the education. Um, special nutrition considerations um, during pregnancy. Um, for your um, adolescence, you can probably imagine that um, body image is a significant issue for um, adolescents. And um, so um, if they become pregnant, um, the um, issues surrounding weight gain um, could be um, a barrier. Um, it's important to um, ensure that the adolescent is gaining enough weight um, and that the um, food that the adolescent is um, consuming is appropriate. Um, a lot of adolescents don't um, uh, have a um, well-rounded nutritious diet and so really educating um, the individual and the family for that matter about the appropriate uh, nutritional needs for um, this population will be um, quite important. Sodium intake, um, important to um, consider um, the sodium intake as um, remember that um, a majority of sodium is retained. Um, so an increased uh, sodium diet can lead to um, more uh, fluid retention. 
Um, women who follow vegetarian or vegan diets um, do need to ensure that they're getting adequate amount of protein in their diet. So focusing on um, uh, items such as soy-based products, uh, tempeh, tofu, um, uh, beans, um, and they may need to um, look into uh, supplement as well. Um, pica is a craving for um, non-food substances and an ingestion of these substances. Um, they can include things such as clay, starch, raw flour, um, cracked ice chips, um, and um, this can certainly um, become an issue. Um, so um, educating about um, pica and um, uh, intervening um, with um, appropriate educational options in terms of nutrition um, is very important. Um, lactose intolerance. Um, can be an issue, particularly as we're thinking about um, calcium consumption. So um, providing the woman with options or alternatives um, to ensure that she's getting adequate calcium intake um, is important. Cultural preferences. Um, remember that um, different cultures um, view food and nutrition in different ways. So it's important to assess the patient in terms of what their cultural preferences are in terms of nutrition and um, modifying um, uh, diet as needed and providing uh, appropriate um, nutritious uh, food options. Um, gestational diabetes um, is um, a, a type of diabetes that um, is diagnosed during pregnancy. Um, women usually um, go through a glucose tolerance test um, in pregnancy to assess for gestational diabetes. Um, if um, women are diagnosed with uh, gestational diabetes, um, they need to be educated about um, evenly distributing calories throughout the day um, among three meals as well as three snacks. These women can be at risk for nighttime hypoglycemia, so encouraging them to have a snack before bedtime is important. It's also important to teach them about appropriate forms of carbohydrate and um, trying to um, combine um, complex carbohydrates with protein sources as the protein helps to um, uh, release the um, sugars and the carbohydrates at a more steady state instead of getting um, ups and downs and fluctuations. Um, nutrition during lactation. Caloric intake during lactation should be about 500 extra calories compared to the non-pregnant woman's recommended dietary allowance. Protein should be at 65 grams. Calcium and iron are needed in the same amounts as during pregnancy. And vitamin supplements, particularly the prenatal vitamin, are um, often continued during lactation. It's also important to limit the caffeine and alcohol because um, that um, can be transmitted through breast milk. Um, and um, drugs should be um, considered um, carefully um, as um, um, certain drugs will um, pass through the breast milk as well. We'll talk later in this presentation about um, drug categories for pregnancy and lactation. Exercise during pregnancy. Um, the take-home point, I think, in terms of exercise is that the woman should maintain her, her level of fitness. Um, pregnancy is not a time necessarily to improve fitness or to lose weight. So the focus should be on assessing what her baseline exercise level is and um, striving to maintain that instead of adding new um, uh, exercise regimen to the mix. Um, a few factors to consider when you're thinking about um, exercise and its effect on a pregnant woman. Um, elevated temperature um, can increase, um, or excuse me, can impact fetal circulation and cardiac function. Um, hypotension can reduce blood flow to the fetus. Um, hormones can, can cause changes in oxygen consumption. Um, remember that moderate exercise has many health benefits, um, positive self-image, a decrease in musculoskeletal discomfort, and a more rapid return to pre-pregnant weight after delivery. Um, guidelines for exercise include starting with a warm-up and a cool-down and not exceeding the recommendations for a moderate exercise um, and remembering that a balanced diet is um, beneficial when combined with a regular exercise regimen. 
Um, the woman should avoid um, market changes in um, depth of water, such as things like scuba diving or um, high altitude um, endeavors. Uh, she should avoid becoming overheated and um, needs to increase fluid intake during um, uh, exercise. One of the recommendations is that um, exercise um, should be um, such that the woman could talk during the exercise. If she's unable to talk or carry on conversation, then um, the exercise is seen as too strenuous. Travel during pregnancy. Um, travel is generally safe um, in terms of air travel. Um, the woman should avoid sitting for extended period of time because um, remember the um, during pregnancy the woman um, is in a hypercoagulal state and so the risk for um, clot developing blood clots is greater than uh, a non-pregnant um, uh, woman. Um, the woman in terms of travel should avoid locations that would put her at high risk for infectious disease and if she is traveling she should bring records with her um, and obtain information about the nearest healthcare facility um, if needed. Common discomforts in pregnancy, fatigue, nasal stuffiness, nausea, heartburn, constipation, hemorrhoids, vaginal discharge, backache, varicose veins, leg cramps, and edema and I think we've talked really about most of these already. Psychological adaptations. Um, it's very important for the nurse to identify and manage psychosocial um, problems um, because this is going to be crucial to positive outcome of pregnancy. And also nutritional needs um, need to be catered to the individual um, related to their age, their ethnicity, their socioeconomic status, um, and their culture. Um, how does pregnancy impact the mother? Um, four primary um, ways um, uh, that the woman sees um, kind of her tasks, um, seeing safe passage for herself and her fetus, securing acceptance of herself as a mother and her fetus, learning to give of self and to receive the care and concern of others, and committing herself to the child as she progresses through the pregnancy. Um, in terms of fatherhood, um, uh, the announcement of the pregnancy, the announcement when pregnancy is conf confirmed, acceptance of the results in strengthening family, um, and focus on plans uh, for the father's involvement in participation in labor and the birth process. Um, how does the pregnancy impact the father? Well, that's going to be incredibly individual. Cultural factors can influence um, the role that the father plays during pregnancy and during the birth. Um, and it's really important as nurses that we um, are not judgmental um, and that we should look at the individual um, uh, couple and um, look at what they see their individual roles as being in the pregnancy and in the birth process. Um, how does pregnancy impact the adolescent? Um, it's very important to consider that um, the adolescent is still growing and evolving into an adult. Um, and so coping with um, the upcoming parenthood um, can be uh, stressful um, and challenging um, for the adolescent. Um, so it's very important to consider how, as nurses, we can um, help the adolescent through that time um, based on where she is developmentally and educationally, and also work with the family to um, help provide her with the support. Um, older couples tend to adjust to pregnancy fairly seamlessly because they're often um, uh, educated, they often have achieved um, both life experiences and, um, and career goals that help to um, uh, enable them to cope with the realities of parenthood. Um, Many people um, nowadays are postponing pregnancy um, for a variety of reasons. One, because um, women have available to them many more birth control alternatives than they did in the past. Women also have many more career options than they did in the past, and many women are choosing to pursue a career first, and once they've been established in their career, they will look towards um, uh, starting a family. Also, the high cost of living um, can cause a couple or a woman to um, post postpone pregnancy and um, also uh, technology has enabled um, uh, women to become pregnant later in life. 
Um, the impact of pregnancy on the single mother. Um, this uh, single mother could be an adolescent or a mature woman, and um, based on their particular situation, they're going to have unique emotional needs. Um, the impact on the single father. Um, in terms of taking an interest in and a financial responsibility for the father. Um, may want to participate in plans for the child and take part in the care after it's born. Grandparents um, may eagerly um, anticipate the pregnancy. Um, some grandparents will take a very active role in the care of the grandchild. Um, if the views and ideals of the grandparents mesh well with the parents, sometimes little conflict is present. However, it's also important to understand that sometimes the values and ideals of the grandparents differ widely um, from that of the um, parents, and navigating um, that rocky road um, can be challenging. The nurse can um, help the new parents um, understand their parents' reactions and help them negotiate any conflicts. Prenatal education um, largely follows the nursing process. Um, the effect of pregnancy and lactation on medication ingestion. ingestion. Pregnancy affects the metabolism of medications. Some may be um, subtherapeutic because of the pregnancy, um, and parental medications may be absorbed more rapidly due to the increased cardiac output. Remember that drugs can cross the placenta and can be passed through the breast milk. Therefore, um, the FDA has um, developed a um, uh, um, list of um, pregnancy risk categories for drugs. And um, the categories are listed here. A um, shows no risk to the fetus in any trimester. Um, and I will tell you there aren't many um, drugs that fall into this category. Category B shows no adverse effects um, on, in animal studies, but no human studies are available. Um, this is the category that is um, probably most widely prescribed um, to women during pregnancy and lactation. Category C is only prescribed after the risk to the fetus are considered. Animal studies have shown adverse reaction and no human studies are available. Um, category D shows definite risks, um, but you may have to weigh the risks and the benefits, um, particularly in life-threatening situations for the mother. And then category X um, shows uh, fetal abnormalities if the fetus is exposed to this particular drug and they shouldn't be used at any time during pregnancy. This can be um, challenging. Um, an example would be um, something like a woman who um, is an asthmatic um, and needs her regular asthma inhalers to um, uh, enable her to um, not go into respiratory distress. Um, and some of those uh, medications can be category C. And so you just have to weigh the risk and the benefits of um, prescribing such a medication um, for the mother and for the fetus. Immunization and pregnancy, um, one really key point to note is that live virus vaccines are contraindicated during pregnancy. Um, some immunizations are allowable during pregnancy, such as the flu vaccine um, and the Tdap. Um, there's a, been a big push to um, immunize um, women with the Tdap um, later on in pregnancy so that that will confer um, some protection to the fetus, particularly in relation to the pertussis. There's been an increased incidence of pertussis um, in the last couple of years, and so there's really a big push to make sure that uh, women um, are immunized um, uh, against the pertussis. Um, if a woman has recently received the MMR vaccine, um, pregnancy should be um, avoided uh, for at least one month. So question for review, what nutritional supplement taken early in pregnancy can reduce the incidence of neural tube defects? We talked about this in Thursday's class. Um, I bet everyone knows the answer is folic acid. Um, and what um, dose should um, a pregnant woman take? Um, usually 400 micrograms is the recommendation. So that's going to um, complete the um, Camtasia video on Chapter 4, um, and we'll move on to Chapter 5 in the next video.